were exactly 42 days to election day, which is on the 29th of May. On that note, a warm welcome to the Electoral Commission, the nucleus of elections. I'm joined in this particular press briefing by the Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Saima Mabolo. Next to him is the Deputy Chief Electoral Officer, Mr. Maseho Shibori. On that note, let's get the show on the road. See you all. Let us brief the nation. Thank you. Thank you very much and uh, greetings to everybody. The Electoral Commission reports that a substantial progress has been made in the preparation for the 2024 elections. We therefore are pleased to report on the pro progress relating to the following electoral milestones. On April 12, the Commission issued certificates to 14,000 892 candidates who will contest 887 seats in the forthcoming election. Nominations of candidates closed on the 8th of March and following processes of verification and objections, 70 political parties and 11 independent, independent candidates were published as final contestants in these elections. 15 political parties are contesting all tiers of the elections, which means the proportional representation sits in the National Assembly, the nine province to national elections, as well as the nine provincial legislatures. A total of 31 political parties will be contesting the national elections for the first time. An analysis of the list of candidates reflects that at 58.14% or 8,658, rather uh, an analysis of the list uh, of candidates reflect that there are 8,658 male candidates, whilst female candidates are 6,234, representing 41.86%. Candidates in the age category 40 to 49 are the majority at 4,361. They are followed by 3,708 in the 50 to 59 year age category. Voters who are over 60 stands at 1,924, and those between ages 18 and 19 are 1,493. Notably, there are 15 candidates who are 18 years and who are first-time voters. And of these 15, nine are female and six male. These candidates are spread across eight political parties. There are 17 candidates who are aged 80 years or more. The majority of the 16 are male, standing for four political parties, leaving only one female candidate in that age category. On gender representation, 15 political parties have a female representation of 50 and above. Seven party, parties achieve the 40, and a further 14 parties have a 30% female representation on their list. The finalization of the list of candidate contesting seats in the elections means that the commission can now go ahead with the printing of ballot papers for the election. The 27.79 million registered voters will receive three ballots to elect candidates to represent them in the National Assembly and provincial legislatures. The use of the three ballots follows the amendments to the Electoral Act, which act was signed into law in April 2023. This amendment revised the electoral system to allow independent candidates 
to contest the regional or the province to national tier of the National Assembly, as well as to contest provincial legislatures. Although the phenomenon of through ballots will be familiar to voters in various local uh, municipalities, it will be new to voters in metropolitan areas and for the first time in general elections for national and provincial elections. There are a total of 400 contested seats in the National Assembly. The proportional representation compensatory 200 seats will be contested by political parties only, and there is a dedicate, dedicated ballot, 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 ballot paper for this tier of the National Assembly. Just one minute as I print the ballot paper. <laughs> the remaining regional or province to national 200 seats will be contested by independent candidates and political parties. This tier of the National Assembly will also have a dedicated ballot paper. This means that the National Assembly will be based on two ballot papers, the National Compensatory Ballot and the new introduced regional or province to national ballot paper. Therefore, in respect of the elections of the National Assembly, voters may elect a preferred party on the national ballot and elect another preferred party or independent candidate on the regional ballot. However, in respect of provincial elections, voters will elect a preferred party or independent candidate on a single provincial ballot. Now, just to give you a sense of the three different uh, ballot papers, the National Compensatory Ballot, or the PR Ballot. This ballot will consist of a list of political parties vying for seats, for 200 seats in the National Assembly. This ballot will be used to vote for political parties only. There are currently 55 parties who will be on this ballot, and the configuration will be a dual, will be dual column. So in other words, in respect of the national compensatory ballot, it will be a two column ballot paper. Now, with respect to the regional ballot or the province to national ballot, it will have political parties and independent candidates contesting for seats reserved for each province in the National Assembly. Voters will use this ballot to elect a political party or an independent to represent them in the National Assembly. The number of contestants on this regional ballots range from 30 to 44. Houting has the most contestants at 44. The configuration of these ballots will be single column. Now, if we turn to provincial ballot papers, this is unique to each province and includes parties and independent candidates competing for seats in each respective provincial legislature. This ballot will allow voters to choose between a political party or an independent uh, candidate to represent them in the provincial legislature. The number of contestants in the provincial ballot range between 27 and 45, with Houting having the most contestants at 45. Again, all provincial ballot papers will be single column ballots. <clears throat> the, 
The Commission has decided that the design of the ballot papers will be underpinned by the following identifiers. Full registered name of the party, the registered abbreviated name of the party, the registered emblem or symbol of the party, the photograph of the registered party leader. In respect of independent candidates, the ballot papers will have the name of the independent candidate, the photograph bearing the face of the independent candidate, and the word independent um, capitalized. The Commission urges voters to carefully review and mark each of, this ballot, each of these three ballot papers before depositing them into the ballot box. Our appeal to voters is to remember that they can only put one mark on each ballot. More than one mark will result in a spoiled vote and thus cannot be counted. The universal ballot template whose dimensions are ben benchmarked against the longest ballot paper, is in production and will be available at all. But can be used by blind or partially sighted people, people with low vision, and people with motor and nervous conditions which do not allow for a steady hand. As we announced earlier, 95% of our logistical supplies for the elections are already at hand. We are in the process of distributing 1,873 tons of material between our different warehouses and storage facilities. In consort, in consort with the provisions of the election timetable, the Commission has also published the list of addresses of the 23,292 voting stations that will be used in these elections. The routes for mobile voting stations have also been published. There are 31 mobile voting stations across the country. The highest number of voting stations will be in KwaZulu Natal at 4,974, the Eastern Cape 4,868, Limpopo, 3,216. All voting stations are now contracted with list agreements concluded with the landlords. And you can find the list on, on our website. There's a hyperlink from your statement. Applications for special votes for purposes of home visits and voting station visits opened yesterday, the 15th of April, and will close on the 3rd of May. Home visits are intended for those voters who are unable to travel to voting stations, while special votes at voting stations are for everyone who is unable to be at the voting station on election day. Special voting will be conducted on the two days preceding election day, which is the 27th and 28th of May. Voting station-based special votes applications may be accessed using one of the following modalities. You can secure them an application via the website elections.org.za or by SMSing your identity number to 32249, and that will be for uh, voting station pay stations only. And you can also submit a, uh, a form to the local office of the IEC. Special votes will also be administered at South Africa's diplomatic missions abroad to service 58,000 voters who have registered against the international segment of the voters' roll. These voters will be provided for at the diplomatic missions, as we indicated. The Commission invites South Africans who are registered on the local segment of the voters' roll 
but who may be temporarily absent from the country, to notify it of the intended absence and the mission where such people intend to vote. Such notifications must be lodged with the Commission by 22nd April. As at today, 9,100 notifications have been approved. Special votes at diplomatic missions will take place 10 days ahead of general voting in the country on either the 17th or 18th of May, depending on the weekend configuration in the relevant country. Those traveling out of the country and between countries must take note that the period to notify the commission uh, re relating to the mission where the person intends to vote must do so by the 22nd of April. The South African voters are reminded that they may only vote at the voting station in which they are registered. That is a general principle in election administrations. Who will inevitably be away from their voting districts on election day may give notice of their intention to vote at another identified voting district on or before the 17th of May 2024. So the Section 24A vote is no longer uh, available absent notification to the Commission. That facility may be accessed with prior notification to the Commission and such notification must be lodged with the Commission by the 17th of May 2024. Thank you very much, Kate. Thank you so much, CEO, for the very detailed uh, update on all sorts of elements as it relates to elections. I'm going to open the floor for questions of clarity, and then we can wrap up uh, this morning's briefing. Uh, if I may see a show of hands, introduce yourself and the media house you come from. Let's proceed and ask questions. Thank you. There's a microphone in front of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's Heidi Jockos from ENCA. I just want to get clarity um, from the IEC with regards to on what basis and actually do you have the full order and judgment from the Electoral Court regarding the MK matter and on what basis are you heading to the Apex Court? Thank you. Uh, Junior Kumalo from Newsroom Africa. Uh, just to follow up on that question, um, the IEC has indicated that uh, it has decided on the ballot paper that um, Jabulani Kumalo, so whose face is going to be on that um, ballot paper, because the IEC said now it can go ahead and print those ballots. Um, and just on the issue of the foreign missions uh, with the judgment that came out last week, how is the IEC, uh, is it the IEC's duty to ensure that there are more foreign missions or is it DECO? Whose responsibility is it going to be between the IEC and DECO and financially will this be feasible for the IEC? Thank you. Thank you. It's um, Natasha Perry here from SABC News. Uh, my colleagues Heidi and Junior have covered me, but um, in regards to the... Um, um, especially the issue in Perth and Canberra, um, with those voters that are voting outside of the country. Um, just if, if the IC can just elaborate on the increase in in the voting stations, and also um, the MK party has called for um, Commissioner Janet Love to step down. Just wanted your reaction um, to that. Yeah, thank you. I'm going. May I please take uh, the last uh, hands this side so that I, I can allow um, CEO and DSO to respond. Thank you very much. Le okay, let's proceed from you and then end on that corner. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Uh, also, you know, my hands was up. <laughs> okay, and, okay, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to take you number last after I've taken this break, and then it will be good to go. My apologies. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Program Director. Um, look, 
My question is much more similar to to the ones that was asked by uh, Heidi. But my Can concern you is, introduce yourself. Oh, sir. oh, sorry. My name is Lung. I'm from the Melian Guardian. Look, uh, I mean. In July 2021, there were people that were saying that if former President Zuma is indeed arrested, there would be riots. In this case, there have been people who are saying that if he's not on the ballot, there's not going to be a, a vote. People will not be allowed to vote because of, of how they feel about him. Is this not something that is worrying the IEC, the continuation of going to court when, when there's threats like this? I mean, we saw people, over 300 people die in July 2021. So are you not worried about what those people who are saying that they are going to ensure that there's no voting, that with the continuation of you going to court? And, and, and the second one from me would be, would be that the issues of signatures that uh, the IEC required from political parties. I think it was about 60,000. How did, how, how did the IEC verify those signatures were indeed of those people whose ID numbers are there? Did you, did you call them? Because if, for instance, the, we live in a country where corruption is rife, uh, ID numbers can be uh, found anywhere. How do you then verify to say this ID number, indeed, this person who signed it is the one that belongs, uh, whose, and whose uh, signature belongs to that uh, ID number? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Kate. Uh, <clears throat> CEO Pizzo Kaya News. CEO, there's a, there's a, there's a court case uh, taking place at the Electoral Court whereby five smaller parties um, um, are fighting the IEC to be included nationally on the national ballot. Was this announcement not too early? Uh, couldn't the IEC perhaps consider the waiting for the decision of the, or the judgment from the electoral court? Um, if the court rules in favor of the parties, what, what are the plans? Uh, from the IEC. Thank you. Pizzo, before we just, sorry, Kate. Yes, uh, which announcement, well, which announcement is premature? I'm not following, sorry about it. The, 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 the five political parties. Mm. Mm -hmm. The case was had, uh, I think from yesterday, it continues. Um, uh, 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 but just to summarize, the judgment has been reserved by the Electoral okay. Court right. on the matter. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pizzo. May I take the lady? Thank you so much. Antoinette Slavert from Rapport Newspaper. I just want to find out this decision that it will only be the party leaders' pictures on the ballot paper. On what basis was it taken? Is it a regulation or is, is, is it an administrative decision? And if a party would like to challenge that, where do they challenge it? Do they go to the electoral court or the party liaison committee? Or what is the case, please? I'm going to take Thank you so much, President. Good morning. We can you MDN TV. I've got only two questions, but the intention was not to undermine the sovereignty of the country, but to say to seek an international best practice. So I'm just checking with the IEC, are there any best practices that you have adopted or that you have taken that you can use for this current election? And the second one, it's I've heard the commissioner say that 95% of the material are already at hand. I wanted to check because I've heard that you've got a challenge, a financial challenges in terms of supplying a ballot material in, in international countries. Are you ready to supply the, the, the material? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to allow the, I can see Pilates that online questions. Okay, let me allow the CEO and the DCO to deal with this batch of questions. After that, we'll uh, take the online questions. Um, CEO and DCO. I'll come back to you on the second round. Thank you very much. Yeah, no thanks. I'm going to deal with uh, two, and then uh, Dr. Shibur will deal with the uh, with the rest. The call for Commissioner Love um, uh, to resign. Uh, it's a not. It's not a matter that um, uh, the commission has looked at. Neither has uh, Commissioner Love um, looked at the matter. So. Um, Personally, 
um, you know, absent any substantive um, evidential material establishing misconduct on the side of Commissioner Love, then there would be no basis uh, for such a resignation. Now, with respect to the Constitutional Court appeal, <clears throat> it is preferable to lodge an appeal when you have reasons because then you can follow the, the reasoning of the uh, court against which you, whose uh, orders you are appealing. But when an appeal is lodged, it's lodged against the orders of court, not against the judgment. And we have orders in this case, and on the basis of those orders, we think that there's a need for clarity on, on a number of issues. One, did the commission go beyond its scope of authority in invoking Section 47.1e? We have no clarity as a country on that aspect. Did Commissioner Love prejudge the issue to extend that she ought to have recused themself, herself, rather. We don't know whether the statement that he made in response to a media question did, in fact, constitute prejudging the issue. Does remission of sentence amount to the reduction of the sentence as ordered by a court of law. We don't know. So those questions have to be answered for the clarity of everybody in respect of the uh, immediate case, but also in respect of future, future elections. Are we not worried about violence? The commission is always worried where the safety of people and the safety of property are concerned. Because an election should never be an opportunity for people to lose life. It should never be an opportunity for people's property uh, to be lost. It should rather, it is rather an opportunity for the voter to record their political choices. In an election that is arranged in accordance with the provisions of the constitution and the law. So the commission is clarifying those constitutional provisions that have a bearing on the preparation of the elections. And insofar as security matters are concerned, the security agencies of the country are responsible to secure all of us. And I'm sure they may be having plans to safeguard the election, to safeguard the uh, election material to safeguard the people, to safeguard the staff of the IEC, and to safeguard the property of all South Africans. Now, the I think the two questions that I, 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 I ought to answer have been answered, and we can give over to Masejo to deal with the rest of the questions. Let's relate to identifiers on the ballot, on the ballot paper. Section 68 of the Electoral Act gives the Commission broad-ranging powers to determine the design, look and feel, and identifiers on the ballot. The Commission exercises that power based on an internal policy that does a number of things. One, it codifies practices as it relates to how ballots have been uh, uh, designed in successive elections. It also draws lessons from focus studies that we did with the Human Science Research Council to aid voters to be able to make their choice with confidence 
without in a photograph of the registered leader of a party will be one of the identifiers is to be found in that policy of the Electoral Commission. And that has been a practice for successive elections uh, up to now. The questions related to the judgment of the Electoral Court as it relates to South Africans who will vote abroad. Section 33 of the Electoral Act provides that voting stations overseas are the following. Embassies, a consulate, or an office of the High Commission. The Electoral Court, having had arguments before it, extended relief that says an honorary consul should be read in to mean a consulate. There are, however, still no reasons for that judgment. On our part, in order not to create perceptions that we are second guessing or we do not comply with judgments of the court, we have written to the Department of International Relations and Cooperation and International Relations and Cooperation within whose remit the power to administer foreign missions resides to establish from them the steps that they are able to take in the time remaining before the election to give effect to the order of the court. We have also asked the court for a full reasoned judgment and also noted a application for leave to appeal the decision of the electoral court to the Supreme uh, Court of Appeal so that we get clarity on whether the ruling of the court accords with international law as it relates to uh, diplomatic, diplomatic missions uh, uh, abroad. The signatures, a independent candidate or an unrepresented party over and above submitting a list of candidates and paying a deposit ought to submit a list of signatures. There are two steps. The first step is that that party or independent candidate first captures the ID numbers of the supporters onto the portal. Secondly, they must upload the signatures, hard copy signatures onto the portal or deliver those, uh, deliver those um, to the Electoral Commission. The Commission does not have a database of signatures. So it doesn't verify that the signature belongs to a voter. All that it does is to check whether the number of captured signatures are supported by the requisite number of signatures uh, in order for a candidate uh, to, uh, to qualify. The parties that are still in court, there were in total 11 applications in the electoral court are sailing either the timetable or alleging that the online candidate nomination system was dysfunctional to the extent that candidates or parties could not meet the requirements to submit. There is clarity as it relates to the six uh, to five matters that have been dismissed by the, by the electoral court. The court had six other matters yesterday. Substantially, the arguments are the same. The court has reserved judgment, and we anticipate that we will receive a order even if we do not have reasons uh, by, late, uh, by late tomorrow. And that will determine when we start to print the ballot papers, because some of the matters still to be determined may implicate, not may, they implicate the configuration of contestants on the on the on the on the various ballot papers the issue of material 95% indeed we are 95% if you consider the following it takes 18 to 24 months to plan for an election you don't start uh, a few months before voting day so the majority of requirements we have at hand the only standing are related to ballot papers you can't start ballot papers before you finalize the contestants there is no truth to the reports that we have asked for foreign assistance to provide for logistics at the diplomatic missions. The Commission will provide all the requisite materials at, at, at those 
at those uh, voting stations. The last question related to observers and observer missions. The good practice internationally is that where you send observer missions, observer missions are constituted by multi multilateral entities, for example, SADC, AU, or independent NGOs that are not part of a state machinery. Hitherto, we've never had to deal with a sovereign observing elections in another sovereign. So we welcome uh, observers, uh, and in all elections we have accredited observers that came from multilateral organizations, NGO, and democracy building, uh, democracy building uh, institutions. Thanks, Kate. Thank you very much. May I request uh, Peladi to get us the online questions before we wrap up uh, this morning's press briefing? Peladi, online questions, please. Okay, oh, sorry, my apologies. Um, this is regarding the 18-year-old age group. Um, in 2021, it was a, uh, the 90% of the population was over 18 years group were not registered. Uh, does the INC have any idea of that age group registration today? Please introduce yourself and let's have your record. Thank you. Uh, Piladi, please follow up. Um, it was a question around the IEC's approach to the Concord, and I think it has been addressed. It was a question around the IEC's approach to the Concord, and it has been addressed. It's addressed, Kate. Let's move. Yes. Sorry, 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 program director. I still need clarity on this. So if the IEC is saying they can't verify the signatures of those people who are on that ballot, don't you risk yourselves in putting uh, people coming to say, this was fraud, I never signed something like this. And what was the point? If, I mean, if you can't verify that this signature belongs to that person, what's the point of that exercise? All right, we got you. Thank you very much. Um, let me allow the team to uh, take this round of questions and we'll be wrapping up. Thank you very much. Okay. Let's repeat. The law provides that a person who wants to stand for election must be supported, their candidature must be supported by signatures equivalent to 1,000 for independence and for parties equivalent to a quota for a seat in the previous election. As I said, the commission does not have a repository of signatures of people in the country. Therefore, the requirements are twofold. One, the party captures the ID number of the people from whom they received signatures on the portal. The portal does a number of things. First, it checks if the people are registered. Two, if the people are registered voters in a province in which the candidate intends to stand. Third thing the party must do is to upload those signatures onto the portal or hand deliver them to the Electoral Commission. On its part, what the Commission is required to do is to ensure that the number of signatures match the number of ID numbers that have been entered on the, on the system. And on that basis, a candidate is, uh, is confirmed. Additional to that, there was a window period within which interested parties could inspect the supporting documents, i.e. the signatures, and if there was cause to raise an objection which the Commission ought to have uh, investigated and made a determination on uh, before the, 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 the list of candidates could be confirmed. The representation of young persons. Uh, since 2021, we have seen and we have been able to invert the underrepresentation of young persons to the extent that, as we speak, uh, just over 40 percent of people on the voters' roll are young persons, people in the age cohort 18 to 39 to 39 years. Uh, we are not yet there because we are an increasingly young population, but we have benefited from the online uh, self-registration as it relates to younger persons because 
it affords them mobility, it affords them convenience of not going to a voting station to access points of representation. Thanks, Kate. Kate, before we... <coughs> yeah, sorry, before we... Before we uh, conclude, I, I said in the statement 55 parties will be on the national ballot. That's finger travel. It's actually 52. So don't say that gentleman has a knack of misleading the nation. It's, that, that's not the point. The point is that it's a finger travel on the keyboard. It's actually 52 parties currently on the national ballot. Thank you, CEO, for that clarity. I'm taking the very last hands. I've seen hands uh, flaring, and then um, after that, we'll be wrapping up. Let me start with you there. Please introduce yourself. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm Howell Omaoleo with UFM. Uh, regarding these court cases, in particular the ones related to the former president and the MK party, how concerned is the IEC about uh, negative perceptions being formed against it? Uh, you'd appreciate that these notions of fairness, uh, transparency, objectivity, they are more about being seen to be happening than just happening. You can be doing the right thing, but you must also be seen to be doing the right thing. What could have gone wrong if the IEC had not gone this uh, route of approaching the Concord? Uh, can the initial complainant do that themselves or anyone else that has got uh, an issue with the former president being on the ballot do that on their own. And secondly, tied to that, I did not uh, understand the clarity provided on the question of post, uh, what do, uh, on the ballot as to whose face is going to be. You have the AFP, which is campaigning with the face of uh, uh, the late Prince uh, Butelezi. What if that party decided that, well, we have a party leader, but we, are going, we prefer to have a figurehead uh, uh, as a face uh, of, of our party? How flexible is the IEC in accommodating such a, a demand? And then uh, regarding Commissioner Love, it's, uh, it's known that she's a former ANC MP when you appoint commissioners in the IC, does it get to the point where they are asked about their political affiliations, even though they may be historical? Uh, does the IC know if she's no, in fact, no longer a member of the ANC or if she continues to be a member? Thank you. Thank you so much. On that note, uh, CEO, DCO, we're wrapping up. Um, uh, Sis Kate, sorry, just um, my question on the former president. Uh, it's Junior Kumalo again from Newsroom Africa. Like, whether his face, uh, former President Jacob Zuma, is the one that's going to be on the ballot for MK or whether it's uh, Mr. Jablani Kumalo, just that one. Okay, thank you. This your CEO, after we take this round of questions, we'll be calling it a day. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Kate. Uh, the, let's try again. The, there's a dis difference between what the party does on, it, on the campaign trail how it campaigns, the posters that it puts up. The only interest of the commission are the identifiers on the ballot paper. For the parties that you've asked about, we can confirm that the face of the party on the ballot paper in respect of MK party will be that of Mr. Jacob Zuma because the party has given us a notice that it has changed its leadership structure. Mr. Kumalo is no longer the party leader. Mr. Zuma is the party leader. In respect of the IFP, while the face of their campaign remains Chief Mangosuchi Butelezi, the leader of the party is Mr. Sabisa, and for that reason, only the photograph of Mr. Sabisa will appear on the ballot paper. So the commission is only interested on the ballot paper, not in managing what the party does as the face of its campaign outside of the ballot paper. The, the question on the uh, perceptions. The Constitution establishes a election management body for the country, which is the Electoral Commission. The Electoral Commission Act gives that body a number of obligations and duties. 
And the standard is that this organization must undertake those duties in a manner that is impartial. In other words, do not take decision on the basis of the person in front of you. Because if that influences your decision making, you are no longer making decisions in an impartial manner. The Electoral Act again places a number of responsibilities on the IEC as it relates to the candidate nomination process. Among those, it, it says, the commission must only accept people who are candidates that are registers, registered as voters. And again says, the persons that appear on list of candidates must be qualified in terms of the constitution. Nowhere does the constitution deal with qualification except in section 47 for the election of the National Assembly and section 106 for the elections of the provincial legislature. The law says the commission must ensure that those people are qualified. So that's the basis on which the commission upheld the objection when an objection was raised that one of the candidates was not qualified in terms of the, in terms of the uh, constitution. And I will leave it at that because the CEO has, has dealt with the issues and the reasons for the commission going to, uh, the, uh, to the constitutional court. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, allow me to bring to a close this press briefing. You've got the statement on your chat groups as well as your emails, but we continue to be available for okay. the issues of clarity on our online platforms. Um, there was a question about the ANC membership of uh, Dr. Love, whether she's still a member, whether you know for a fact that she resigned from the party. Well, we don't know uh, because um, no one has to disclose um, their party affiliation. In terms of the Electoral Commission Act, um, the person who's appointed as a commissioner may not have a high um, um, political uh, profile at the point of appointment. And um, the panel led by the Chief Justice has looked at that to check whether the commissioners are qualified in terms of the legal criteria and, uh, as well as the constitution. Parliament did the same, which is a multi-party forum. They looked at whether the candidates who are eventually appointed commissioners are qualified in terms of the constitution and the Electoral Commission Act. Um, and uh, eventually the president appointed on the basis of a recommendation of the uh, multi-party national assembly. So as to whether she remains a member of this or the other party, it's a matter unknown to us. And we shouldn't really uh, know for as long as they satisfy the constitutional and legal criteria. Thank you very much, CEO, for the clarity. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, thank you very much. Um, we'll continue engaging on various issues as developments happens. Thank you very much.